Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about the booster cryogenic test that's happening today. It started about 10 o'clock this morning. They started prepping for this thing early. The roads were closed pretty early, and it's going to be closed until they're done with the cryogenic test. But so far today, so far, they've been at it for over five hours hours and they have another three hours left in the timetable so spacex is completing a full cryogenic test of booster they're making sure that everything works they have to make sure that every single pipe every single valve everything works in booster before they do a orbital flight test possibly in the first quarter of 2022 that's when elon musk said that they want to do the orbital flight test now there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be done they need to do a static fire of booster they possibly will be doing another static fire of ship 20 sn20 and they also have to stack ship 20 on the booster before they launch it now is booster 4 going to fly to orbit elon musk says yes so that's what we're going to take as the word of gospel here, because Elon, well, he's the man in charge. And there's been some rumors that Booster 4 will be only for ground testing and Booster 8 will be the booster that flies in the orbital flight test. So we're sticking with Elon here because he is the lead engineer. He knows what's going on. I mean, it's Elon Musk. What, what else do you need? So Booster 4 will fly on the first orbital flight test now let's talk about something that happened recently at the starship production facility this is the place where they build the new boosters the new nose cones the new starships everything is done at the production facility and also that's where they're making the new wide bay also known as the thick bay by some of the people here and also uh high bay mid bay all the tents all the stuff that they need to put together these giant spaceships are in the production facility. Now, NASA Marshall um, tweeted this. Starship launch hardware stands tall at SpaceX, while NASA HLS expert Randy Breswick and Victor Glover take a first-hand look. A Starship will land NASA Artemis astronauts on the moon during Artemis 3 after NASA SLS and NASA Orion deliver the crew to lunar orbit. So NASA astronauts, the experts of the human landing system, went to Starbase just recently and took a look at the facilities, took a look at how they're going to be making starships. And that's a really interesting take on it, because right now this is all kind of you know, it's all a test model. You know, these are Pathfinder models, the first starship that's going to be launched isn't going to be the final model. So what they're seeing now is a very early stage of what's going to be happening in the future for the HLS missions. Now, the Starship that we see today, the Starship that is out there on the uh, at the launch facility, isn't the same Starship that will be launching to the moon. So take that into consideration. NASA is here to support SpaceX through this mission and also the little road bump that they had with Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, well, that seems to be over because NASA is spending uh, money and time sending these uh, representatives down to Boca Chica. So I want to share with you a few photos that I took the other day down at Starbase so you can kind of see the massiveness of this place. Now, let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. This is, These are the tanks. This is part of the tank farm. These are giant gigantic i don't know if you can see anybody in there i'm looking down here at this photo and i don't know if you can see any people in there but look at how small that truck is that little red truck that's right underneath me that's not a little truck that's a pretty big truck that's like the size of an ambulance so if you take that and you compare it how tall these tanks are and you have to drive by these tanks every time that you go down to the launch site if you go to the other side of the launch site towards the beach you'll drive by these tanks and on the right side you can see booster four and it is right next to these tanks a little bit further back about 50 yards back but it's absolutely amazing to be able to go down there and see this stuff especially late at night 
It's absolutely beautiful. And the funny thing is, when I go down there, the thing that I thought about the first time, I was like, man, this is a huge production facility. And the fact that this production facility has thousands of people going in and out, trucks going in and out. And I was like, man, this is going to be stinky. You know, like I thought like just diesel fumes, all sorts of fumes going in and out, like all sorts of stuff going on. It's a construction yard. It doesn't smell. You can still smell the ocean and it smells great. So <laughs> that's one thing that I noticed when I was down there and I just want to share with everybody. But here's another photo. Let me show you this one. This is a sunset at Starbase. And this is my first kind of glowy orangey red sunset that I've taken while I was down at Starbase. Let me know what you think in the comments of this photo, please. And you can see Starship and an older booster. And it is absolutely beautiful at night. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful at night. So let me know what you think about that shot in the comments below. Here's another one. Let's take a look at this one. This is a still from a video. Uh, this is right off Highway 4. You can pull off the side of the road and basically get this shot anytime you want to. Because there's always room over there. There's never anybody parking there because there's not a, a parking area, but you can pull off. It's a little pull off. Park right by there. There's like a little little inlet right there. Shallow water. And you can walk around, uh, around the water and get to a little sandy part where you can get a little bit closer. Not too close to Starship, but... A little bit better view than across the water. Here's the skirt, the uh, lower part of Starship. Very cool. You can see the wires. You can see the the tubes, if you will, on that one as well. So that's that was pretty cool. You can do that from the same spot. There's a lot of these from kind of the same spot. You can move around down there too. You can see the uh, flaps are extended, and it was becoming a little bit darker at that point. That's when I met a couple of people, and this is right before the venting happened at the top of Starship that night. It kind of scared me because the venting was quite loud. There's the nose cone of Starship. This is a, a still from a video, uh, but like you can see the tiles from where you are. You can see how, how intricate this tile layout is, how many like hundreds of tiles there are just from this spot, just on the sides and on the nose cone of this shot. You can see them all. It's really cool. And here is Booster, uh, booster 4 at the launch facility. Uh, I'm a little bit like underneath where that is, but it was getting a little bit dark and I had to check my settings. It's a little bit fuzzy, a little bit of green, but you can see the cutie arm and the booster. And it just looks, I just thought this looks like one of the Transformer movies. You know, like this looks like this is going to transform into something else. I thought it was uh, a pretty unique angle, a uh, pretty unique shot. And it looks how mechanical this whole thing is and how monstrous it is. When they say Mechazilla, this is what I think of. And you get to see this almost every day. I get to see this almost every day that I go down there. So I think that's a pretty interesting uh, take on it. And here's my favorite from that night. Starship by itself. You can see a little bit of glimmer at the bottom which I'm really happy about. You can see a little bit of the tiles. It was pretty dark. I actually took this one um, with my Canon M50 with a 400 or 200 millimeter lens. I wish I would have brought my 600 millimeter because it would have been amazing to get really close up views of a sunset like this, this color and the tiles that would have been really cool. I think that's what I'm going to be doing for my next one. So yeah, let me know what you think about these sunset photos in the, uh, in the comments below. Thanks, everybody. Take care of yourselves. That's it for now. See you next time.